Ooh, sticky pork. Spack my nostrils and call me wholesome. I've got some eating to do. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our kitchen and today we are doing another 4321 video, uh, part of the four three ingredient recipes to try one time in your life playlist. So if you've not seen them after this video, uh, watch the rest of the videos, put on your sweatband, have a barathon, grab the popcorn because you can get lots of ideas and inspiration for your ka-ching. Ka -ching. Hopefully by the end of today's video, we will have a maple syrup smoothie. We will have some pork ducky spring rolls. That's what we're gonna call them. Pork ducky spring rolls? Uh, maybe not. We have a mint chocolate mousse and a beef curry hot pot, which is what we're actually starting with because that thing is gonna take quite a while indeed. We call it three ingredients, but really it's three items. And I love that flexibility offers. For example, in the freezer aisle and some of the other videos, you've gone and got things that have like 600 billion things in one packet. And just for that simplicity, for some of you guys, it really has uh, helped you get in the kitchen, which I absolutely love. And then of course, please add more things to it and just build up those layers and just blow your mind. And then so share me your creations. I love to see it. Let's start with this beef curry hot pot, which is gonna be a stonker. All right, and I'd probably make it sound like it's quite an intense one. The hardest thing is actually preheating the oven, so do that straight away. Um, you have to bake it for quite a long time. The, the ingredients, there's three of them. Surprise. Some beef braising steak, okay? It's the sort of stuff that you'd put in a casserole, all sort of cut into nice big old fat chunks. And what we're gonna do, this is just a generic curry sauce tin, okay? You could do anything you wanted here. You could add like a jar of sausage casserole kind of vibe going on, or you could put a tin of soup in. You could pad it out with some lentils. But this is just a curry sauce that I've never bought before. It was on the shelf, it was on offer as well. Ooh, just as my oven preheats, it's got onion in there, pineapple, it's got like curry powder flavoring, obviously tomato. So almost everything you want from just like two things, beef and a tin now, we've got a load of flavor in there. It's nuts. Well, it's not nuts, it's, it's curry sauce and beef. Ah, oh, damn. I put all the sauce in, I realised I was going to leave a little bit to stain our third ingredient, which is potatoes. Nice little discs of potato like this. But what my plan was to use some of this sauce and brush them on at the end for like five minutes just to char some flavour into the potatoes. I'm going to season it though. You guys have given me some slack saying things like water and seasoning. Add it in there. But I do feel like if I push it to four ingredients, it opens up so much more. I might have to do that soon. Yeah, it might have to be like four, four, two, one or something. There's foil on it because if we don't put that on there, those potatoes are gonna look very sunburnt indeed. But towards the end, I might give it 90 minutes on its own and hopefully so that the moisture in, in the curry sauce with the beef going up, it might sort of soften the potatoes, but we might take that foil off for a little bit longer just to give it some color. And that was where I was gonna brush a bit more curry sauce, which I've all poured on there, ah, uh, on there to give it like a curry potato vibe. Oh but I'm sure it'll be good. We're gonna move on to the dessert now, which is a mousse so we can get it made and chilling. It's gonna be a mint chocolate mousse, but it very nearly wasn't gonna be because the drink we're gonna do today, or we're gonna do, was gonna be a mint tea and not with a, with a tea bag, just a completely stewed fresh mint with lemon in there. And I was like, I've tried that before. I can't remember where, and it was actually not too bad. It was on the 4321 playlist. <laughs> so I would have duplicated one that I've already done, which of course you guys would have loved. It would have been quite hilarious. And I'd be like, ah, oh, my, yes, memory loss, good. So actually this morning I had to go back out to the supermarket and buy some mint chocolate because I really like the idea of a mint mousse. I did have ginger chocolate. This was, they were both on sale to be fair. Both these bars are quite expensive. They're normally like two quid, they're like 20p each. So I don't know what's going on there. But ginger mousse, I mean, some of you might like that, quite fiery. Just ginger's not my favorite thing. So a mint chocolate mousse, dark chocolate, but you could flavor that up any way you want with milk chocolate as well, all the flavored stuff. So that's where you can ram in more flavor with one item. Have you ever wondered what it is like for me when I'm shopping in a supermarket for 4321, sometimes I just stare at shit. And the people, like the guy who came up to me, you're all right, mate. Yeah, yeah, I'm just doing, getting some ideas. Like, right. The freezer aisle, particularly, I look at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like lobster in here and stuff like stuff that you wouldn't even think it's like a treasure chest. So I get quite excited by that. Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah. But along with this chocolate as well, which is actually, like they say 20p a bar, absolute bargain, 60p. Uh, we need some cream uh, and some eggs. That will give us a stonking mousse. I feel like I'm having a bit of a bowl protest here, but <laughs> it's all for good reason. We've got one for whipping up the cream, the chocolate, which is gonna get melted in the microwave in short blast, but you could use a bain-marie, and these two for the eggs, the white and the yolk. Although it's tempting to whisk up those whites first, I would do the cream if I were you, just to do it whilst it's still cold uh, to soft peaks. 
Wow, that was on too fast. Now I have to be honest, uh, as we add in those egg yolks, I'd normally add sugar in with the egg whites, which we're about to whisk, but as we're restricted to the three ingredients, we've got to stay strong to it. It might make it 2% healthy. So I've given the electric whisk a clean, but um, we'll give it a little breather a minute. Because it's quite important that our chocolate, ooh, look at that. I bet that's one of the most fun things of making your own chocolate if you had a company of, mm, how should we lay it out? Oh, that's a strong flavor, nice. It reminds me a little bit of After Eights, which is actually, if you put icing sugar, mint flavored into the mousse, hmm, you'd have an After Eight mousse. Ooh. All right, so a 30 second blast just to get it melted, but most importantly to get it melted and at least room temperature. We don't want it really affecting the consistency of the mousse. <laughs> don't do that. Ooh, nice. So that's a minute into melting the dark chocolate. I just want to show, I just love the glossiness of dark chocolate. It's so reflective. It has this sort of like mirror-like look to it. Uh, but remember to do it on 30 second blast. If you just do it in one long thing, you'll probably burn the chocolate. And also the, the bowl that you're in, if I hold that, that's actually really warm. It's still melting the chocolate now just by stirring it and agitating it like that, okay? So don't get too crazy with this. I like using eggs in the 4321 because you kind of got two ingredients out of it, the whites and the yolks in, in some weird way. So you've got the cream and the yolks sat in the background patiently. The chocolate is cooling down. They get merged together in a bit, but whilst it's cooling, <laughs> like Ric Flair then, woo! Oh, I might have to start doing that, woo! <laughs> oh, my God. oh, wow, <laughs> look at those like, horns. Nice, stiff, Tim Peaks, woo! The uh, cream mixture has been patiently waiting as we add in all that chocolate and hopefully incorporate this together. One consistent mixture, please. Might take a little bit of time, but enjoy it and fold. Beautiful. And you can see how thickened up that has become now as well. So mixing that with the egg white is hopefully gonna make it a little bit more airy. Take like maybe a quarter of it and then start to, <laughs> yeah, it wanted to escape. Just fold it all in, slowly incorporate it. But again, folding it as well, ideally to try and keep that air in. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but it will be worth it. So I'm just adding in my final amount and uh, you can really see how that texture has changed. Oh, that's amazing. The only thing I would say is it's room temperature. So I'm gonna start adding it to a little serving vessel and get it chilled in the fridge, which is why we did it as our second recipe. So I'll do that and we'll jump to the next one. All right, so this next one, um, remember we always do a starter, a main, a dessert, and a drink here on the playlist. So if you want, mix up some of the ones in the playlist, or I think I mentioned this recently, there's someone that actually does a four, three, two, one theme night, which is uh, pretty cool. But this one uh, can be done hot or cold. It will be cold because of the timing of everything here. And to be honest, actually, <laughs> everything that I tend to make uh, here on the channel, by the time I've like taken a, a thumbnail or some, you know, a few bits for social media, it's like, oh, it is generally cold. Like all the time. <laughs> uh, for this one, nice and simple, get yourself a frying pan. This is some pork mince. And because the pork is quite fatty, I'm not gonna add any oil. Yep, this is working an absolute charm. It's emitting a little bit of fat, so I don't need the oil, just cooking it fully through. And then we'll season it and flavor it because I haven't actually told you really what we're doing yet. <laughs> Ooh, this is some hoisin sauce. And that is two good old dollops of it, okay? Hoisin sauce, I sometimes call it duck sauce or plum sauce. Hang on, duck sauce, wasn't that a song? Ooh, sticky pork. I like the idea of using the hoisin. I, I just love that because it's quite sugary as well. It's gonna stick and coat to our pork. In fact, as I do this with the residual heat in the pan, that is smelling amazing. It kind of already is. But by warming it, it's gonna make it thicker stickier and just latch on to the pork. Back on the flame and over that heat as it starts to thicken we just continue to stir and stain that pork through the sauce. Oh but whatever you do don't like have a little taste of it because the taste of red hot sugar will probably destroy your tongue. Give it a couple of minutes. There we go super sticky super stained pork let that cool down. 
So I went to three supermarkets and they didn't have um, rice paper wraps, like the transparent ones. So these are wheat flour ones, the ones that you kind of have actually uh, at a Chinese restaurant with duck and stuff like that. All I know is that the flavor in these is going to be amazing, but that is our three ingredients. Here, just because I want to add a little bit of color, is my garnish. <laughs> it's my fourth ingredient, just a little bit of a sliced spring onion to put alongside it. That's literally it. Because I have added a, a fresh sprig of mint to the, the mousse to make it look a bit more exciting. Also because I bought that because I was going to make the mint tea. I won't taste it yet, but there's no denying that that is super simple and I reckon these are going to be amazing. The time is going off our oven. Oh, that's had the 90 minutes. Oh, it smells like a chip shop. Curry sauce chips, you know. Oh. But we've had a little bit of spillage. I'm so glad that we put down <laughs> that tray. So 90 minutes in there. I want to bake it for a little bit longer than that anyway, just to make sure that beef is cooked through. We'll take the foil off and see what's going on with these potatoes and maybe bake it without them. Right, this could be disastrous. Oh, crikey. Oh, hot. Oh, oh my gosh. The sauce is all thickened up and the potatoes have slightly sank into it. I can tell from here that it's already cooked through. These potatoes are nice and soft and the seasoning just sat on top of there. I'm just going to bake it for another 15 minutes with that foil off, still on the tray, to see if we can get any more colour. But then failing that, it might all spill out. <laughs> Last up, a drink. It's going to be a maple syrup smoothie, not mint tea. <laughs> This is just some standard milk. Make sure it's cold, because we're not using ice. That's a banana. And a good trickle of maple syrup. Just a trickle, bit of a bodge like I just did, to be honest. <laughs> Beautiful. I really like food. I really like cooking. I like eating. I like food. Uh, I like cooking. That's my whole <laughs> Alcoholics Anonymous course. Yeah, it's fun. Play with your food, folks. Right, let's get this thing out. It smells amazing. Oh, no, we won't. No, we won't. No, we won't. Let me just open this. Check out the bubbling. Ready? Oh, look at that. Angry. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy about this. Oh, baby. We better let it calm down. I've got some eating to do. It's got to be said, folks, as I make the thumbnail for this video, have you noticed they're all quite the same for the 432 when I try and have it all like this? So I've got enough space for my banner there. Yes, YouTube. But what a spread. Oh my gosh, <laughs> where to start? Okay. Uh, thanks for watching folks. This is for some reason always the bit that I find the most awkward uh, with the video. It's like, hmm, <laughs> eat it. Do you really want to, sometimes I just like, that's how you make it. You, do you want me to always share how it tastes? I feel like you do, I don't know. Oh, that is just amazing. <laughs> I kind of wish I tried it warm as well. Sticky, tangy, sweet, a little bit naughty as well. I love the wraps on it and um, just simple. Love it. We'll wash that down with a maple smoothie. Whoa. Oh, I love that. You know it's good when I go straight for another sip. Oh my gosh, the banana is the mothership ingredient in here that's holding it all together. The milk's doing its thing and the maple is just mild enough. Love that. Cheers. All right, and digging into this thing. I <laughs> get through the ribbons of the potato. Oh, and lifting that meat out. And brilliant. I've got some on the work surface. That's that's what we want. Mmm. Oh, spank my nostrils and call me wholesome. That is amazing. That is wholesome. Tender. The meat is soft. The flavour of that sauce in there. Remember, you're kind of out of control of that. Pick the sauce that you want. And the softness yet with the crispness just on the end. Merry Christmas of these little seasoned potatoes. Mmm. Like I was saying at the start, and maybe curry sauce and lentils, I don't know. You can do that if you want, or some rice. Pad it out with some more veg as well, but on its own, there's a lot going on there. I think, I, I really think you should try it. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I got my garnish on this, but it was gonna be on the mint tea. It's just, I'm not gonna eat that. Oh, that is a rich, dark, minty, deceptive thing. It looks so innocent, but it is really rich and intense. I mean, that is, way beyond the portion that you'd want. You don't want too much, quite heavy in that regard. You almost want like a sauce to cut through it as well. Or maybe like a cherry one, or even like an orange mint vibe. You could put like a little thread of, of marmalade sauce for it or something, that just to kind of cut that out. But then again, that was a huge amount. So maybe a little mouthful or two. I really like that, that's, that's good. And the other thing to say is I'm not missing the sugar in there at all. And you can put, as I say, any 
type of chocolate you want in there and play around with it to your heart's content. Stonking. In fact, if I had to describe this whole video in one word, it would just be stonk. I feel like I should just have a t-shirt that just says stonk. I might do that actually. Actually, on that note, the t-shirts at Phoebe Design, the donut worry ones that I sometimes worry, they are on my Teespring store now if you want to uh, check them out. But thanks so much for watching. If you've got any 4321 recipes or ideas, a lot of you send me them. I get quite fascinated by them. We have a, a nice conversation on your social media of choice. Check out the rest of the playlist too. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure your notifications are turned on. Happy cooking, and I'll see you <laughs> Oh no, I'll finish the video by poking my finger in my eye. I'll see you soon. Bye. I'm a romantic rapper, baby, ain't science and a label, but I'm spreading out these lyrics like topping on a bagel. Cooking is a shizzle, so don't you get stressed, just get a hot pan and some chicken breast. <laughs> Stuck to the train! Okay, um, try not to do that. Yeah, try not to do that. <laughs>